They say he was a pirate from Spain who made a pact with the devil and died of a broken heart. He was a man who lived a life that reads like an adventure novel, blending mystery, wealth, ambition, and the turquoise waters of the Caribbean Sea. This is the story of the pirate Mundaka. Welcome to the Mysteries of Latin America podcast, where we tell stories about the myths, legends, and mysteries of North, Central, South America, and the Caribbean for the education and the entertainment of the whole world. My name is Andrew Colon, and today, let's tell the story of a man who was either one of the real pirates of the Caribbean or just a very rich man with a broken heart. About 15 minutes from me here off the coasts of Cancun, Mexico, there's an island called Isla Mujeres, the island of women with breathtaking beaches and turquoise blue waters that rival any in the world. But in the middle of this vacation paradise, there's a dark past, a story that involves slavery, pirates of the Caribbean, and unrequited love. While there are different versions of the legend, the story goes something like this. Fermín Antonio Mundaca was born of humble origins in the Basque region of Spain in 1825. From a young age, he dreamed of being a powerful and influential man of means. He decided to study botany in those days, but later on found more wealth and possibilities in a much darker occupation, that of a cargo smuggler and slave trader, bringing Africans to the New World, earning him at least the honorary title of pirate. Mundaka made several voyages, mainly taking African slaves to work the sugar plantations on the island of Cuba. In Mexico, he was also involved in the trade of what is known as enequen in Spanish and hemp in English, which was used to make ropes for sailing ships. While his riches were considerable, in his eyes he wasn't amassing the wealth that fit his ambitions. Aided and encouraged by a pair of enslaved Nigerians, he decided to conjure up Satan himself and strike a bargain to get the kind of success people only dream of. Three times he tried to invoke the devil, each time asking Lucifer for a sign that his petition had been heard. But three times all he heard was the sound of the Caribbean Sea all around him as his slave ship moved on. On one voyage after leaving Cuba, and he was paid for the sale of over 400 Africans, Mundaka got his sign. Legend has it that Mundaka saw a vision that led him to Isla Mujeres, Mexico. Some say he had a dream about a beautiful woman who told him to change his ways and go to this island paradise, while others claim that an apparition of the Virgin Mary was who guided him to the island. Regardless of the specifics, the legend suggests that Mundaka interpreted this sign as a calling to abandon his life of trading in human lives and seek redemption on the island of Isla Mujeres. He set sail for the small island, the easternmost point of Mexico, only 180 miles or 290 kilometers away from the western tip of Cuba. When he arrived, he had five members of his crew carry off his stockpile of gold and silver, buried it deep in the jungle vegetation, and then shot each one of them dead so no one could come back for the treasure. Then he went back to the slave ship, killed the rest of the crew, set the ship on fire, and took a small boat back to the island. So much for his quest for redemption. By the age of 51, Mundaka had amassed the immense wealth he so desperately wanted. Whether it was with or without the help of the devil, Fermin Mundaka was set for life. He had everything a man could want, but one thing. Someone to share it all with. That would change during a stroll out on the island. He saw and met a woman named Prisca Gomez Pantoja, but who many knew as La Trigueña, a bronze-skinned, dark-haired, green-eyed, ravishing young local woman. He instantly fell in love with her and set out to win her over. And he tried everything. He showered her with expensive gifts, wrote her letters and sonnets. These were different times gave her jewelry, but it did him no good, as the young lady, some say she was as young as 14, again, different times, just wasn't interested in the advances of an old man. By now Mundaka was obsessed by his trigueña, 
The legend says that Mundaka proceeded to buy a huge tract of land that he called Vista Alegre, which literally means happy view or joyful view. And if you've ever looked off into the distance from the cliffs of Punta Sur on Isla Mujeres, you'd experience that same kind of joy and happiness. That's a guarantee. It's said that this huge tract of land took up 40% of the island's total mass. And to give you an idea how big that is, that's roughly the size of Central Park in New York or the entire Principality of Monaco in Europe, so it was sort of a big deal. With his knowledge of plants from studying botany, he created lush gardens with the exotic vegetation of the island and with seeds he brought from his travels from India and Africa. Here, he built a vast hacienda, a type of plantation, complete with main house, wells, and stone arches. Part of this land stands today and is known as Hacienda Mundaka. The sprawling estate boasted intricate architecture, lush gardens, and statues, depicting scenes from Mundaka's dreams and fantasies. The mansion became a symbol of his love for La Trigueña, a place where he hoped to create a life of happiness and prosperity. Despite the grandeur of Hacienda Mundaka, La Trigueña remained loyal to a local fisherman. Mundaka, now consumed by his unrequited love, poured his emotions into the estate, creating a sanctuary that reflected both his passion and his pain. Mundaka's adventures didn't end with the construction of Vista Alegre. Despite the setbacks in love, he remained a shrewd businessman, expanding his hemp fiber plantations on the mainland and amassing even greater wealth. As the years rolled on, Mundaka's health began to falter. Sensing the approaching end, Mundaka turned his attentions to matters of the afterlife. He envisioned a grand tomb, a final resting place, that would stand as a testament to his undying love for La Trigueña. That tomb is still in the local cemetery of Isla Mujeres, and it's become quite the destination for tourists who hear the story of this eccentric and obsessed character. The tomb has a carving of an elaborate skull and crossbones design, a nod to his past as a pirate, perhaps. But the tomb is empty. There are different stories as to why, but they converge in that they say he went to the city of Merida in the state of Yucatan to either receive medical care for his faltering health or check on businesses there when he died. Any information as to what happened to his body has been lost to time. But what we do know for sure is that he never made it back to the island of his Trigueña. Today, part of Hacienda Mundaca still stands, and after years of being abandoned and in ruins, it's set to open in 2024 to receive visitors interested in seeing the vestiges of the life and the story of a love-crazed pirate. If you want to do something a little different if you ever visit Cancun, Take the ferry over to Isla Mujeres, spend the day out on Playa Norte, have some fresh grilled fish out at Playa Lancheros, and maybe walk off lunch by taking a stroll to the newly opened Hacienda Mundaca. And if you can, let us know how you liked it, and subscribe to the podcast either on YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple and iTunes, or wherever you're catching us. Friends, it's been a pleasure, as always, telling another story of the myths, legends, and mysteries of Latin America for the whole world to hear. We'll do this again next week, when I have a very important story. This time the love was requited about a Spanish castaway who found love and a new life as a warrior here in our area almost 500 years ago. That one's going to be really fun, so be on the lookout. Friends, that's all for us this week. I wish you and yours a fantastic holiday season, Feliz Navidad, and a very happy and healthy new year in 2024. My name is Andrew Colon. Adios. Thank mm -hmm. you.